नमस्ते नमस्ते आई मनीष एंड आई लाइक टू शेयर विथ यू वेज इन विच यू कैन ओपन आउट द हिप्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जस्ट सेट स्ट्रेट इफ यू फाइंड सिटिंग लाइक दिस इज डिफिकल्ट यू कैन इवन सिट ऑन अ क्वेश्चन कीप यू आईज क्लोज एंड बिफोर वी बिगिन जस्ट टेक वन डीप ब्रेथ सेटिंग द इंटेंट द संकल्प टू बी एबल टू work towards opening up of your hips let's get started it's an area that a lot of people have a lot of pain and stiffness in now a lot of the times we have this common discussion that when you open out the hips you release emotions this is armchair science it's not easy to we cannot prove this yeah having said that intuitively a lot of people say that once you release that it completely you become much more expressive and free flowing i'd invite you to experiment for yourself that's the best way to learn these things so firstly just open out your hips titli asan butterfly what a beautiful name okay when we talk about the hips we are talking about couple of things of course you've got the gluteus medius and maximus at the back but you've got the iliacus small little part of muscle here called the iliacus and then you've got the psoas that's closer into the groin these areas are very stiff especially for a person working a sedentary job if you're seated the whole day it's going to be really stiff so let's begin with some basic things that we can do the first one is just to come here into a lunge drop the knee drop the foot at the back start to get your hip to go down a little bit can you feel that you'll find that the thigh is stretching iliacus so as all these different smaller muscles from there onto the elbows if you can and lift the back knee up and i want you to take long deep breath so when you're working on the body you got to train focus of so the mind and the prana the deep breath ujjayi pranayam just visualize that you're taking this breath all the way to your hip beautiful yeah pushing the knee slightly away change let's try the same thing on the other side so first just here in a lunge drop down yeah and come here this posture is actually like this but for now this is also fine hips go down a little bit this works with anjaneya asana so once you feel that the thigh is beginning to warm up a little bit the psoas the iliac is beginning to warm up a little bit you can come down here elbows down and lift the back knee up deep slow breathing don't let the outer knee go out keep it in so don't let the knee splay out pull it towards the median the center of the body and stretch the back thigh breathe in and out then come here pushing the knee slightly wow next one of the exercises that i like the most is this you 
you've started in Baddha Kona Asana here. But you, what you do is you extend the legs a little bit more, like a diamond shape, a little more out. Breathe in. Yeah, you can move the glutes out so you're on the sit bones. As you drop down, just forward fold. Tuck the tailbone back. Forward fold. And very gently, starting to drop the elbows. Further. And further. Eventually, you'll find that your head is touching the feet. So that's a nice, nice stretch. Now you can bring the legs a bit closer. Baddha Kona, Sun, bound angle. It was not an important position in generations gone by. But in our generation for yogis, it's a very important posture because nobody is sitting on the floor. If you really want to work on your hips, now the question arises, why should I work on my hips? The answer is very simple. Eventually, all asana is designed so that you can get into Siddhasana or Padmasana for two and a half hours. That's when we call Asana Siddhi. It doesn't matter what else you can do with your body, but if you can't sit like this, then the purpose of asana, the word asana means seat, is not being served. So for that to happen, you need to have quite open hips. Right? I would request everybody to spend a lot of time sitting on the floor. Have a nice carpet when you're watching stuff on, uh, you know, uh, whatever it may be. Sit on the floor. You can even sit on the floor when you eat your meals, whatever it may be. Sit more and more time when you're reading and so on, on the ground. Here, start to just gently, you can just massage the inner thigh. Start to drop forwards. We're still working with the same work. Instead of taking the legs out, we've brought it forward. They have a lot more to do with the hips, but let's first get this done. You might find this is a little more challenging. But as you breathe in and out, you'll find slowly the knees are sinking into the floor. In yoga, even these small little changes you need to record. And you need to value because it's a small journey, small signposts on the journey towards health and vitality and then beyond. Wonderful. Our next range of work we'll do slightly different. So, your ear, just lie back. Okay. Bring the right leg here into Ardha Padmasan like this. And now bring the left knee here. Thread your hand between the right hamstring and calf. And this hand from the outside to bring the knee towards your hip. It's okay if your uh, pelvic flow comes up a little bit off the ground. It's a beautiful, beautiful stretch. So you get this entire part of the body, the hips, the glutes, all of that to stretch. Slow breathing. Even though we are talking about hip flexibility, it's not possible to work in such isolation. One small thing, if you can open up, it opens up the entire body. So here the lower back is opening, the hamstrings are opening.
the nice deep breaths in Ujje. Let's change the side. So bring the left leg here, Ardha Padmasana. As much as you can, try to take it deep in. Slide the hand, thread the hand between hamstring and calf. And now bring this down. Now if you can't thread the hand, no problem. You can just hold the knee even from outside here and try and bring this close. For some of you, even this will be painful, no problem. You've got to stick to it. I would suggest doing all of this after you have done Surya Namaskar. So when the body is being opened up through Surya Namaskar, you can do maybe 11 rounds or you can do even more. If you need more warm-up, you can go up even to 50. Just ensure that the body is nice and uh, warmed up. Good. So we've done these stretches. This is a nice, beautiful stretch for the hips, the ear. This allows you now first to get this hip quite low because we've done that opening work. Now, if I were to raise my hands up here, that's very good for my back. But currently, I'm just working on opening the hips. Fantastic. When you feel that this can open some more, you can open this knee out. Open this calf out. Start to drop down. So you'll find that the back, slightly under the glute, the back hip, outer hip, starts to open. The slight external rotation and the hips are beginning to open. The hips are beginning to open with slight external rotation. You can even move slightly to a side. And change. Very nice. Let's do the other side. The first focus is just to get your back thigh as close to the floor as you can. Yeah. And to facilitate that, you can drop here. And then start to take this left calf a little bit more open. So your calf is more perpendicular to the hamstring. Beginning to drop down. A beautiful stretch on the glute, on the outer hip. Once you've done that, just move to one side. Change. Now, if you found that those exercises were fairly difficult, no problem. We can start even slower than that in the sense. We can start with something even more basic than that. And we can do this. Stretch here. And just starting to drop down. Pushing your tailbone back. Not only have you dropped here, you can even drop this side. With flexibility, the longer you can stay in these poses, 
the better and better and better the body opens. It's natural for the body to be open. Through our stress, we have made the body tight. Please do write in to me and tell me how your own journey is progressing. I'm very curious to know always whether all these things are helpful or not. The next posture is something that I enjoy very much. So what you do is, you're like this, bring this foot to this, the inner part of the knee and take it underneath. Bring this foot to the knee here, take it over. So now there's a triangle inside of you. There's a triangle between the legs and uh, the legs are, the calves are perpendicular to the thighs almost, so to speak. Drop down, pushing the tailbone back. Slow breathing. Wow. Because you have done all that work, you'll find that this is more open. For a lot of people, this will be a lot of pain. I'd just like to share a joke with you. A lot of the English idioms, or all, all language idioms, they come from the physicality. So often in English, we say such and such person is such a tight ass. Meaning they're very stiff, they're very rigid in their thinking, you know, very flexible with our ideas. A lot of that comes from the uh, physicality. So let's change the legs. Tight hips, tight body, tight in the mind. So there are a lot of benefits from being flexible. Body and mind are one and the same. We don't ever consider it as separate. So therefore, if you want to become more flexible as a person, in terms of your experiences of life, in terms of your creativity and so on and so forth, it's important to start with the most reliable instrument you have, which is the body. A lot of people tell me, ah, I'm very flexible and then tomorrow the schedule changes and they're, they're going haywire. It's very important to have the honesty to train. Even if you can improve your flexibility by half an inch, it's immeasurable how much you have changed your entire body-mind. The last thing that I'd like to share is this simple stretch. Ananda Balas and happy baby pose. So you're taking your knees to the floor. It's okay if the pelvic floor comes up a little, the pubic bone and the tailbone. Yes, you're trying to get the knees to touch the floor. It's okay if they're dangling. But... And finally come up. If you have been able to do all of those exercises, the reward really is that you can sit in a meditative posture for as long as you want. In the previous videos, I've shared how to open the hamstrings, the lower back. You combine all of this to be able to, and I'll do another video on the shoulders. Essentially, when it comes to flexibility, it's not about becoming an Olympic gymnast. It is about training the body so that you can sit still. If the body, if the knees are flat on the ground, if the hips are firm, you can sit like that. It's so beautiful to be able to sit like this for hours on end. Once again, I thank you for joining me. Let's finish this practice by just being able to move our prana, our breathing, our energy down into the hips. So inhale. Eyebrow center, exhale all the way into the hips. Inhale, so. Exhale. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Excellent. Namaste, thanks for joining me. Check out some of the other videos, subscribe so you'll get more and more videos and let, let me know what are the other areas that you want me to cover when it comes to yoga.